It's always interesting when a company as big as Samsung releases a new flagship smartphone because it often has to release different versions of the device for different global markets. Well, today, we're putting two of those versions head to head the quad core Qualcomm powered Galaxy S4 for Sprint up against the Samsung Exynos powered octa core Galaxy S4, the GTI 9500 for other global markets. I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now, and this is Octa versus Quad. Let's get to it. Okay, so as we learned in our Okta unboxing video, there are almost no aesthetic differences between these devices, save for some branding down low on the battery door. Almost all the changes between the SPH L720 for Sprint and the GTI 9500 are under the hood, and the changes are significant. We'll hit hardware first, followed by benchmarks and performance, and we'll end with a little camera testing. Follow us on social media, by the way, so you don't miss the rest of our extensive Galaxy S4 coverage at Pocket Now. Sprint's device is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, a quad-core processor running at 1.9 GHz. The i9500 takes its processing power from an Exynos 5 Okta CPU, which is actually two quad-core clusters, a big 1.6 GHz Cortex-A15 and a little 1.2 GHz Cortex-A7 working together. According to ARM, only one set is active at any given time, depending on what kind of processing load is being asked of the device, with the switchover taking 20 microseconds to accomplish. The CPU emulates a single quad-core processor to Android and its apps, and that becomes evident in certain benchmarking applications, which you'll see in a second. The different CPUs also mean different GPUs as well, with the Okta carrying a PowerVR SGX 544MP3 unit, while the American variant offers an Adreno 320 from Qualcomm. Both devices carry 2 gigs of RAM and the usual 1632 or 64 gigs of onboard storage, upgradable via microSD to an additional 64 gigs. From a forward-looking perspective, these are both very capable and cool platforms, but some speculate that the Snapdragon variants will see a larger share of developer attention, or at least will detract from the attention given to the Exynos version because all US variants feature the Snapdragon. That's speculation, but it's something that's important to consider if your app or game tastes are exotic or cutting edge and you're planning on investing in either of these devices for the long haul. US buyers will face an important choice when selecting between these devices in the form of LTE. While the Exynos 5 Okta CPU itself does support all LTE bands, the GTI 9500 device as produced does not. There's no official support for LTE in this model, so any American wanting to take advantage of LTE had better go with one of the US carrier variants. There is HSBA Plus, of course, in the 9500 for those in markets with a strong AT&T presence. In terms of synthetic benchmarks, the difference in CPU power between these devices is easily seen. The Okta outscores the Snapdragon in every metric in our benchmark battery, with the exception of the new 3D Mark gaming test. We ran the test multiple times just to be sure, but the Snapdragon-powered unit outperformed the GTI 9500 both times. Whether that's a result of Crate versus Cortex or the different GPUs, we won't go into, but it was interesting to see the Qualcomm-powered American variant outpacing its Exynos sibling in this one benchmark. In terms of software performance, the benchmark differences don't equate to much variance in responsiveness. We were slightly disappointed in the occasional lag or stutter we saw in our Sprint unit in our full review, but those rare hiccups were solved by and large by turning off some of Samsung's new processor-intensive features. Both of these devices are quite responsive as long as you're not running the entire feature set that Samsung has added. And of course, you're not going to get as much carrier bloat with the international unlocked i9500, but Samsung has provided S Health and the other S apps, which we've covered in other videos at Pocket Now. App launch times were very close for low impact apps like Twitter and Facebook, with the American version lagging by fractions of a second behind the i9500 and apps like the camera and browser. Samsung's dialer is the classic style on the international version, not the whitewashed easy mode lookalike on the Sprint variant, but it comes up just as quickly. Performance on web pages is substantially identical as well, with text zoom and re-render about as quick as you could ask for on each. Netflix movies loaded in less than three seconds on each with a fast Wi-Fi connection. Games like Temple Run, Angry Birds Star Wars, and Riptide GP ran identically in our testing on each, but the flight simulator Sky Defenders ran with significantly more jumpiness and stuttering on our American device. The bottom line for gaming seems to be that most popular titles will play comparably on each device, but certain high-demand niche games may run differently. Many folks are anxious to learn how well the Okta S4 does against the Snapdragon S4 in terms of battery life. Well, each device offers a 2600 milliamp hour power pack, but how do the radically different processor architectures affect power consumption? 
Well, in terms of static testing, the Antutu battery tester sees a winner in the OctaCore variant. The GTI 9500 scored a 503 in the stress test, while the SPH L720 Sprint variant scored a 470. We wanted to test these results under real-world conditions, though, so we brought the two devices out side-by-side -side for a two-hour-long reality test. We matched up settings, installed apps, display brightness, even home screens and wallpapers as best we could, and turned LTE off on our Sprint device to keep each device on as equal a footing as possible. We left Wi-Fi enabled, though, so we could hop on and off our home network, and both units started at 100% charge. During our journey, we put each device through a condensed version of our typical day, firing a few emails off, jumping into and out of Twitter and Facebook, checking in on Foursquare, taking in a few tracks on Spotify, engaging in a bunch of text message and IM conversations, watching a YouTube or a Netflix video here and there, taking notes in Evernote, browsing the web, GPS navigating, squeezing in a quick game or two, taking some photos and video, and even making a handful of phone calls. Though the i9500 won the call quality competition, but we remind you these phones are on two different networks. We did a lot of stuff. Remember though, anything we did on one phone, we did concurrently or immediately afterward on the other. At the end of our two hour test, the results were as follows. The international GTI 9500 boasted a 73% charge remaining, while the Sprint L720 sat at 68%. Total time off charger was 2 hours 15 minutes, and screen on time was just over 1 hour on each device. We'd describe battery life as good to great on both devices, under even moderate to heavy loads, and even considering we jumped into and out of coverage areas a few times on the subway. After the video you're seeing now, we'll run the devices to depletion using looped video on each. Results from the test to exhaustion will be available down in the description and in our post at pocketnow.com. In the interim, that 5% difference roughly reflects the disparity we recognized from our extended testing, and it verifies the Antutu result as well. The international version beats the Sprint variant in battery life, but not by much. We can't tear down the hardware on our review units, but according to Chipworks, the primary camera sensor on the i9500 is the Sony IMX135, and many sources seem to agree the American versions pack the same hardware. While firmware almost certainly varies across these devices, results are quite similar, as you can see. The only difference we could discern was a greener tint on the i9500 in our low-light test, but otherwise results looked identical to us, even in video. With the Galaxy S4, Samsung has admirably dealt with the problem of delivering the same product experience across many different markets, with very different internal hardware because these phones are very, very similar. Unless you're a hardcore gamer or another user with very specialized needs, you won't notice much difference in performance between the i9500 and the American variant, and even then the differences may surprise you. Remember the Qualcomm device won the 3D gaming benchmark. Yes, the more globally friendly version offers better battery life and better overall benchmarks, but is that worth the loss of LTE support and the much higher price tag of an unsubsidized model? If you're an American buyer, we don't think so. We think most folks will be better off buying the regionally appropriate version of the Galaxy S4, which honestly shouldn't come as much of a surprise. The OctaCore variant is cool, but it's not necessarily worth the reputation the spec heads are giving it. Like I said in the video, folks, we have a whole lot more Galaxy S4 coverage at pocketnow.com and here on YouTube, so subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Throw us a like if you did enjoy this video. Leave us a comment if you have some feedback. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.